Perfect. All right then. Welcome in everybody. Hope you're doing all right. Um, welcome back to another yoga session here today. Um, like last week, we're going to do some similar stuff to do with our breathing, our mobility work, and maybe throwing a little bit of stretching in there as well, just to fully relax us down today. Um, so to start with, we're just going to set ourselves, set our intention for today, and then we'll move on with the rest of the session. So first of all, let's get yourself nice and comfortable, both your arms, legs, everything in a nice, comfortable position, and just close down your eyes and just focus on your breathing. So just breathe nice and gently, nice and slowly, in through your nose, out through your mouth, and just bring your attention to it. So focus on that now. Keeping it going there. Don't worry about how fast or how slow you're doing it. Just pay attention to it and be mindful of the breathing that you're doing here today. Notice how it feels as you breathe in through your nose. Notice it filling up your lungs. And then as you exhale, notice how that feels as well. Notice how it feels expelling that air and breathing back in again. Keeping that breathing going, let's bring our attention to setting some intention for today. So first of all, let's thank yourself for bringing yourself here today. Thank yourself for taking the time to take the time out of your day to focus on yourself and your well-being. And maybe dedicate this practice maybe to yourself, maybe to a loved one. Just have a little think about that and maybe just say I'm, I'm going to take this time to really focus on these movements that we're going to be doing. And once you've done that, go back to the breathing again. Let's do two more breaths here in our own time. Good. Now, hopefully our nervous system is a little bit more calm now, which is good. We're going to do some box breathing today. So to do a box breathing, um, you'll see why it's called box breathing. So we breathe in, and then we're going to hold that breath in, and then we're going to breathe out, and then we're going to hold that breath out. And that makes it a box. So imagine you go in, hold, out, hold. So that's the box. We're going to start off with just two seconds of each, and then we're going to work our way up to doing four seconds of each. So we're going in, hold, out, hold, in, hold, out, hold, in, hold, out, hold. Keeping that going there. So keep it going there. Have you got a bit of a rhythm? Keep that box breathing going. This is really good for having control over our breath at every single point of it. It's not just breathing in and out. It's breathing in, holding it, breathing out, holding it, breathing in, holding it. What it does is just teach us to have control over it. We're not just going through the motions. Let's try and extend that out now. So we're going to breathe in now for three. Hold for three. Out for three. Hold. In. Hold. Out. Hold. In. Hold. Out. Hold. In. Let's go down now into four seconds. So just extending it a little bit longer. I'll let you do this in your own time. So just count through your head there. 
in breathing in for four seconds, holding it for four seconds, breathing out for four seconds, then holding it. So in your own time, you can't quite reach four seconds as well. That's not an issue. Just try and do what you can here in your own time. And if you feel like you want to extend it even further than that, going up to five seconds, six seconds, feel free to do that as well. That's completely up to you. So wherever you're at on this, just do two more box breathing here. And return to normal. I just got a knock at the door. I'm just going to answer it just in case something open. Actually, in. Um, okay, let's uh, move into some stuff where we move our body a little bit more now. So when we're breathing in, we're going to breathe in and sit up nice and tall, looking forwards, chest up, chin forwards, and then down. As we bring it down, breathe it out, and we're going to relax those shoulders down. So we're almost going to almost like hunch forwards as we come down, as we breathe out, and then breathing in. And breathing out. So just imagine like your breath is animated with this as we go through. We're going to take that one step further as you breathe in. You're going to bring your shoulders up and squeeze them up. Now it is. And then as you breathe out, bring them down and really drive those shoulders down as we breathe out. You might notice in my breathing, I'm starting to make a bit more noise in it, trying to get that here. That's going through the teeth, through the mouth, or however you do it. Let's get some noise in there. If you feel yourself getting a little bit lightheaded, just ease it off slightly. That's absolutely fine. Keep it going there. What we're doing here is flooding our body with oxygen. It's exactly what it needs. Our body needs the oxygen to get through to the muscles, get through to the joints, bring all that healing energy into everything that we need. Oxygen is such a good fuel for our body. It really helps us. It helps through our brain, it helps with our muscles, and that's what we're doing here. So really get that in there. Okay, so we're going to do three more here. And on the third one, what we do is fully exhale. And once you've fully exhaled, you're going to hold it out, okay? So I'm going to come with you here on the last one, so breathing in. And then breathing out, fully exhale. Then hold it out for as long as you can, but don't pass out. Stop before then. Keep it going as long as you can. I'm going to talk to you whilst we're doing this. So what we've done here is fully got our body full of oxygen. So what you probably can notice through here is that you're holding your breath probably longer than you probably could normally. And that's fantastic. You Because you flooded yourself with oxygen. Your body's not wanting any more. It's got lots in there. So it's actually fine. Okay, good work. What we're going to do, we're going to go through that one more time. Um, and we'll, we'll see if we can hold it any longer when we do that last one, okay? So we're gonna go through the, the breathing again. So we animate the breath, breathing in, out, nice deep breathing, off we go. So. Keep 
And again, cycling through that breath. Three more here. The last one, breathing out, and then hold it out. Seeing how long you can do this for. Once you're done as well, give me a thumbs up on screen so I can see. Excellent. Good work, everybody. So it looked about the same, which is good. That's excellent. So what, yeah, what we did there is flood our body with oxygen, giving it everything that it needs, and then holding it there. So just showing our body that it doesn't need it all the time. What that does is help us to regulate our breathing a little bit better. So it helps our body understand what it needs and how it needs to process it. So we can do that sort of stuff semi-regularly, you know, a couple of times a week, just once or twice through. Usually the guided amount is about 30 the breaths in now so big breathing in breathing through now times 30 and then do that breath hold at the end but we just did a shorter version of it today so that's what we did okay let's go into a little bit more movement now so the thing we're going to do first is we're going to as we breathe in breathing is not as important here we're going to bring the arms out whilst keeping those elbows in and as we breathe out we're bringing it back in again so breathing in arms out breathing out arms back again Hopefully through this, you're going to feel a little bit of stretch in the shoulder, maybe a little bit across the chest as well. That's just helping us to open up these muscles here, get a little bit of a stretching, get a bit of mobility in those shoulders and help us to get some, help us with a little bit here with our posture. So again, as you bring those arms out, breathing in, and as you bring back, breathing out. Again, we'd have to do as heavy breathing as we have been doing. So. Just nice and gentle. Just let the breathing dictate the movement in and out muscle. Okay, four more here of these. The fourth one, what we're going to do, we're going to bring our hands out to the side, almost like we're looking like a bit of a cactus, and then we're going to bring them up as we breathe in. And as we breathe out, we're gonna go back down again. So breathing in, raising those arms up, breathing out, bring them back down again. Keep that going there. Just to turn to the side so you can see it as well. So here, you can see I'm trying to keep those elbows and hands almost in the same line. That's the best way to find me. Turn a little bit more. There we go. So, so you try to keep them in the line, try not to let them come forwards trying to keep them here so you, as you go up you might feel a bit of a stretch here through the lats a little bit through the chest maybe even a little bit through the shoulders and arms but that's what it's doing is helping us here with the posture showing our, our shoulders where they should be as they go up and don't worry if you're not too great at this to start with you know if you are coming forwards it is a progression this is something that you can work on and get better at the more we can get our arms in this position especially without arching our back, the more stretch we can get through the chest, through the shoulders, and they are generally in a healthier position to be able to do this. So keep that going in there. Let's 
Excellent work. I'm just going to turn to the front again so I can watch you whilst you're doing it. Excellent work, everybody. Don't worry about getting up really high. Just don't try to, you know, get up as high as it is until your arms start, you know, dropping forwards more. Probably feel that stretch out a little bit more, especially through these important muscles that help with our posture. But let's do two more here of this. Okay, in your own time. It's okay, we don't need to rush into it, we wait for you. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is gonna have one hand out to the side with the palm facing up, one hand out to the side with the palm facing down, and then we're gonna rotate it around and then back around to the other side. Just keep rotating it back and forth between the two. And if you're doing it, rotating it enough, keep it moving there, you'll feel a stretch through the shoulder maybe down the arm, maybe even into the elbow and even down into the wrist potentially. And what it's doing is stretching the ligaments, the muscles, every single bit along there that often gets rejected within a regular stretching regime. So really nice to get it and it can help with stuff like alleviating pain within those joints. So it can help alleviate shoulder pain, elbow pain, wrist pain, which is really important, especially if you're a, either a wheelchair user or you're somebody who has to be sat down a lot, whether that's a desk job or because of your ability levels, whatever it is, it really helps because we can be hunched over and stuck in one position. And this allows us to open up those joints here, which will really, really help. And it might be a little bit painful in those areas, especially if they are tight, but not in a bad way. Maybe in like just a, they are just a little bit tight. So as long as it doesn't hurt like a sharp pain, Again, like just a little dull ache for that in there, that's usually okay. Let's just keep that going there a little bit longer. If you do need to take a rest as well, you can put your arms down and bring them back up. So holding it out here for a long time can be tiring, and that's not what we're here for today. We're here to stretch, not to get tired. Okay, let's give that a nice little shake out. Excellent. And then we're going to do that similar thing but we're going to do it in a slightly different exercise okay so similar results here so what we do first of all we're going to have an elbow touch into the side and then we're going to come out to the side here and then back in then we're going to bring the arm up and then we're going to go back here and then in and then we're going to have it up high and then bring it behind us i'm going to do it from the front as well so you can see so it's starting here out to the side so you can do that one then we're going to bring the elbow up and then it goes back almost like you're going to be throwing a baseball and then forwards and then up high and then you're going to bring it back behind you here and then forwards so you probably have to feel a stretch through the shoulder there let's change arms now onto the other side so out to the side here and then back arm up back behind you like you're throwing a baseball and then back then up high and then rotate it back Back forwards. Let's change back to the first arm again. So out to the side and back here. Back baseball pitch. Back and then up high. Back forwards. Then changing to the other side again. So I'm just getting a little spasm. <laughs> so up to the side. And then back here. Baseball pitch high, rotating it back, good work. That's this side again, side, and then back. Elbow raised, arm back, up top, back, and then back. And this side again, the lower position, the middle position, a higher position. Good. Let's do one more on each side. So that's the side here. And up higher. And then right away at the top. Good. And then here. Here. And here. Good. 
Now, all three of those positions are essentially doing the same stretch, but our muscle doesn't work in just one plane of motion. It works in all planes of motion. You know, this, you know, the chest, the shoulders all here that are getting stretched, they work all here. They don't just work, you know, when you, if you get somebody to show you a chest stretch, they might just go, this is how you stretch your chest. But that's only doing it there. Whereas the chest does lots of different movements, you know, up and down through the range of motion. So that's why we do it in those three positions there, just to make sure that they are getting the full stretch that we can do there. We don't do that for every stretch, but we do it for a couple here and there that really do need it. So that was working kind of mainly within the shoulder joint, the rotator cuff muscles, stuff that is really important for our posture. Okay, cool. Let's reset ourselves a little bit. Let's go back to some breathing. And then we move back into some more movement stuff, okay? So we're just gonna set ourselves back again. No need to close your eyes down if you don't want to, but just gonna come back into just five breaths here, in through your nose, out through your mouth in your own time. And the reason we're just doing these five breaths is we just wanna settle ourselves down. We've done some stretching, so our heart rate can come up a little bit during those times. And we don't really wanna be in that zone where our uh, sympathetic nervous system is getting excited. We wanna be in the parasympathetic nervous system where our body can recover, relax and stretch and move a little bit easier. So that's what we're trying to do, stay in that zone. Okay, let's move into some neck movements now. So we're gonna start with looking down and we're gonna hold it there looking down. Start with, let's get that chin tucked in on your chest there feeling maybe a bit of a stretch through the back of your head and your neck. Don't worry if you can't, might just mean that you already got the flexibility here. But if you can, don't go to anywhere where it starts to hurt, just holding in that position there. If it is hurting, just ease it off slightly. And if it's still hurting in that position, you can just look forwards. Okay, so let's look up now. So go do the opposite way, look at the ceiling. Keep your mouth closed and you might feel just a bit more of a stretch through just underneath the jaw there, sort of in the bit between sort of the jaw and the neck, that little area. The jowls, I guess you would call it. Feeling that stretch there. Good, let's look down again. And then what we're going to do is do a look back up. We're just going to go back and forth between looking up and looking down. Nice, controlled, in your own time. No need to rush through this. Nice, slow, controlled movements. So we did with the stretch with the whole positions, we introduced some stretch to the ligaments and the muscles. And now what we're doing is introducing some movement into that. So what we now we're allowing it to go through a longer range of motion, and that just helps it to be a healthier joint. You may have heard of the expression motion is lotion. That's what we want to do. The more we can move our joints in a healthy, safe, controlled manner, the more they appreciate it and look after us in the long run. Okay, let's move into some rotation now. So we're going to start by just looking over to one side. I'm just going to hold it there. Now on this one, sometimes holding it to the side can be uncomfortable. So if there is any point where it's too uncomfortable, just ease off slightly and just look less of a degree. And then you can always move back into that more of a degree if that's okay with you. I'm just going to return so I can see you doing it. Good. And don't worry about how far you can rotate around either. That's it's not competition. And then easing it off and then round to the other side. Just holding it there. 
and like guys on this side. It might be that one side feels tighter than the other. That's always fairly common, especially if you're maybe even a side sleeper or if you maybe even rest on an arm whilst you're at a desk or on the sofa, if you lean on one side, usually one side gets tighter than the other, but that's good. We can observe it here during these stretches and maybe be more of aware of it and maybe just be in those positions just a little bit less for a longer period of time. Okay, let's go back to the first position and then back and forth between the two. And side to side again, nice slow, nice controlled movement. No need to rush this here it's in our own time. Excellent. Okay, let's put our hands down by our side now. And what we're going to do is bring our ear towards our shoulder. And then with the opposite ear shoulder side, we're going to bring that arm and try and pull it towards the floor. So it creates a distance between this ear and this shoulder. So it goes down there and you get, there's a quite, so there's length in this area here, that's it. So rather than trying to pull the head over more, try and pull the arm down more if you want to feel more of a stretch here. Just a little bit safer for our neck, that's it. This is an area that can get quite tight quite easily. Especially if you're like hunched up a lot. Curled, curled over a desk or a phone or a laptop or TV or whatever it might be. Okay, let's ease that off and then go over to the other side. If you like me, one side might be feeling tighter than the other. This side for sure is tighter for me. And that's mainly because I sleep on that side. My pillows are high, so this side gets tighter. So whenever I stretch it out more. It's good. It's good to be aware of these things and it might help you in the future. You know, maybe stretching these things out more or being aware of your positioning. Yeah, and then we're going to go back and forth between the two. So it's going over one side and then the other. Good. Okay, so for the last bit on the neck here, what we're going to do, imagine you've got a piece of paper in front of you and you've got a pencil on the end of your nose, yeah? And you're going to start off and you're going to make a small spiral that's going to get slightly bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger all the way to the outside of the paper. And then you're going to go right the way back in smaller, same direction the whole way. And when we get back to the middle, we're going to change direction and go the other way, okay? If you are somebody that gets dizzy easily or suffers from vertigo, just do what you can here or skip this completely, that's fine. So just start small and gradually get slowly bigger. Bigger and then you start to find sort of the outside of the page that you're on. Don't worry, go get huge circles. Let's go back into the middle. So gradually going right the way to the middle and into a stop, then change direction and then go in the other way. And if you are getting dizzy or anything, you can just slow it down a bit. That just helps with that. There's no rush here. Coming back into a smaller circle again. to a point in the middle. Good. Okay, we're just over halfway through the session, so I'm going to allow you to have a little drink break here, uh, and then we'll get back into it again, just because we want to keep you hydrated. We've been moving a lot around our, our body, so we want to make sure that it's hydrated. Because hydration not only helps our bodies to stay lubricated, or the joints and that, but it also gives us energy, because 
if you're not hydrated, what happens is that it's harder for you to use your body. So your body's more strained, so you get tired easier. So that's why it's always important to keep hydrated through our exercise and just through our daily lives. It's not just about having a nice clear week. <laughs> Okay, good work so far everybody. Let's move into some more uh, spinal movements now. So we've gone through our neck movements here. We're gonna go into our spine. So we're gonna start off with some flexion and extension and we're gonna go extend and then flex down like so. And remember if you can't quite do it, holding your chair here and getting through that movement, you can always use the back of your chair to help you out here. That's the case. But what you can do as well, you can always use a mirror doing this as well, or even the Zoom call, and see how I've got like a, I know I've got a black T-shirt on, it's not the most helpful one, but my spine is curling over there. It's not just flat, it's curling over, and then it's the opposite on the other one. And I've got that arch in this one, so you can always see it arching over, and then this way is, over. And that's kind of what we want here, rather than just bending forwards and then bending up. The reason for that is if we just bend, what happens is only one vertebrae or a couple of vertebrae are bending, whereas if we're curling over, we're getting all of them curled over. So it's just a little bit of movement on each of them, rather than one taking all the brunt of the action. Because that's quite a, usually quite a big source of people's lower back planes is that one or two vertebrae is taking the load for the whole spine, whereas it can uh, needs to be distributed even, evenly. And if anybody's en into engineering, you know, like any sort of bridge or anything like that, it's not just one thing taking the whole load, it's lots of little bits, you know, whether it's a suspension bridge that's got all the cables and they're all taking just a little bit of load, or if it's uh, an old style bridge with the bricks, you know, all those individual bricks in the arch, they're all taking just a little bit of load. So it's really easy and it's gonna last for a long time. And that's the same for our spine. We want it to, all those little bit, all those vertebrae to be equal and that's how, and this can help do it. It just programs our body into being, making sure that all of them are getting movement rather than just one or two. Let's go into rotation now. So we're gonna rotate from one side and then around to the other side, and then back and forth between the two, nice and gently. If you get to a point it's hurting, just don't go that far. In fact, we don't really need to go too much into a stretch here. We just want to have some rotation. And it's the same as the previous two movements. You know, we are, we're just getting in a different direction. So the first two were going this way with the, you know, flexion extension. This one's going this way. Well, that won't be that much. <laughs> wow. And if anybody here has or is worried about any sort of shoulder pain or that, this is such a fantastic movement for that. And the reason being is that this really helps to loosen up that mid to like higher spine area. And the reason we want that is so that that is the movable part. Because sometimes when it becomes stiff and it becomes resistant, our shoulders take over and they're taking the brunt of it without the assistance of the assistance of the back and the spine muscles that can do those movements easier and therefore what happens is that we overstretch overuse and that with our shoulders and that's when they become kind of become damaged and cause long-term problems in the shoulder areas so that using this is really good and it also helps the posture because it helps it to loosen it up so we can sit up nice and tall let's move into the last one here which is our 
uh, lateral flexion, so that's coming down from one side and then coming over to the other side. And this is essentially the same as the one where we're going you know, forwards and back, but we're going side to side. So it's doing the same movement, just in a different plane here. Apologies if this is a lot of information, but I'll repeat myself over the coming weeks so you'll get to know it a bit more and a bit more. It can be a lot in one go, understand. Okay, good work. Uh, let's move into one where we're going to come round in a circle, like so. Nice big circle, almost like you're stuck in a whirlpool and you're just going around and around it. It's just going to help reach all these little bits that we might have missed, all those bits in between. Let's change direction. It's going to be opposite way now. And again, if you are somebody who suffers from vertigo or you're feeling dizzy or that, just slow it down or ease it off or stop completely. That's absolutely fine. There's no pressure here to do exactly what we're doing. This is your session, remember? It's not my session, it's your session. It's not everybody else's on the screen. That's their session to do. So you just do what you can do. Okay. Let's give it a nice shape off there. Sometimes it's nice just to get a bit of, you know, flow off the cobwebs a little bit from it. Excellent. Um, and usually with the shaking, the weirder is the better. So, <laughs> uh, okay, good. Let's move into some more yoga flow stuff here to finish off today's session. Um, and if we, we still have about six, 16 minutes to go, so we can do some uh, of our, uh, body scanning as well towards the end, if hopefully we have enough time there. So we're gonna start with the one where we thread the needle. I'm gonna come forward to bit actually, so I've got a bit more space on the screen. So we're gonna start with one hand on our lap like so. We're gonna reach back behind us like this, and then we're gonna go up to the sky, and then we're gonna bring it through, and then thread the needle through to the other side like so. Let me demonstrate that. So check, then once you've done that, you're going to change arms. So you bring it back up, change arms. I'm going to show on this side as well, so you can see. So it's rotate round to the back, looking behind us, then up to the sky, and then thread the needle through. So this hand comes through here, and then we're going down there, and then onto the other side. Back, up, thread the needle through. Place the hand on your lap, the other arm back, arm up, and then thread the needle through. Arm back, arm up, thread the needle through. So I'm doing almost like a little pause at each point. So it's pausing here at the back, then bring it up. Pausing at the top and then bringing it through and then pausing it there for a second. Yeah. Feel free to do this in your own time though. If you want it to go a bit slower or you want to go just a little bit faster, just make sure it's nice controlled as you've been in. You know, I don't want you just to go through the motions. I want you to be in control of every single bit of this movement. So being aware of where you are, where your fingertips are, where your shoulders are, where your elbows are, just be aware of your body and how it's moving through this movement. Good. Notice how your spine feels, notice how your shoulders feel. Maybe even notice how your head feels. I'm just going through this. You're doing a great job, everybody. 
I'm looking occasionally. Good work. Let's do two more on each side here. Once you've done the second one, bring it back to center again. And let's grab another drink as well. That's quite a big movement there. So have another sip of your drink and then we'll move on to the next movement. So if at all, I'm just gonna put my camera down for a second lower and you might just bring it closer, one second. Just as a, um, oh, that's down a hole. hold on. <laughs> Let's bring that down. Right, so, so I just want to show you my feet for a second. So, uh, if you are worried about sort of tipping forwards in your chair, especially if you're in a wheelchair, but even if you're not, just bring those feet forward slightly, just creates a longer base here. So, when we're doing this next one, if you do, it might make you feel a bit more stable in your chair. That's all I do. So you can either bring your feet forwards rather than tucking them underneath or that. Um, and you get bonus points, obviously, if you've got fun socks on me. So, um, okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to bend down forwards and we're going to come up first of all with that arch back and then we're going to go back down again. And then next time we're going to come up and we're going to curl up and we're going to go up just bit by bit by bit keeping that chin on the chest until the last moment, curling it up, reaching all the way up above our head. Sorry, I'm a bit off screen. And then down and then giving it a nice shake out of the bottom and then repeating through that. So it's down all the way as far as you can bend over. Then coming up with a flat back and then back down and then coming up with a curl back, bit by bit, finding the neck at the end, raising those arms up above our head and then down and shake it out. So keeping that move in there. So in your own time now, remember up with a flat back, up with a curl back, arms above your head, and then down and shake out. Nice control again. Don't worry about if you're not going the same speed as me or as anybody else. It's your session. You go at your speed, what you feel comfortable with. Gonna watch you for a second, so keep it going there. Looking good. Don't be afraid to be like quite animated with the movements, especially in the spine. That's absolutely fine. It's almost good to be sort of over exaggerating the movement as long as you're staying within a pain free range. That's fine, but feel free to exaggerate, it's fine. Get your jazz hands out. <laughs> Good work. Let's do one more here together then at the end. So coming down, up with the flat back, down, up with the curl back, bringing in, raising those hands up above our head down and give it a shake out. Good work. I'm going to return that camera back to normal so you're not looking at my feet. Good work. Looking good there, everybody. Getting some good movement in there. Definitely some improvement even from last week. Um, so well done. Uh, we're just going to move into our last little bit here um, and we're going to do our body scan. We've got 10 minutes-ish, so we should have enough time just to slot this in. 
So if you weren't here for last week, the body scan is essentially something where we're just checking in on each individual part of our body, starting from our head, working our way down our arms first, and then down our body all the way down to our toes. Do you have any sort of chronic pain or anything like that, and you're focusing on an area and it causes you distress, just skip out that area, move to an area that either we've done already that doesn't cause any problems, or just skip over it and then you can wait until the end. So it's options there for you. Um, same as if it causes any distress in any other way. So it might not be pain, it might be other reasons why it might do. So that's absolutely fine. Because what we're doing, we're paying attention to all the parts of our body. So we want to make sure that we're doing that with kindness as well. We want to be, make sure that we are kind to our body. So if it, focusing on pain is generally not a kind thing to do. So um, yeah, let's go through that then. So we just close down our eyes. Seat yourself up nice and tall in your chair, nice and comfortable still though. We've got hands on our lap, maybe palms facing up, palms facing down, whatever feels comfortable for you. And we start with focusing in, in on the top of our head. So right on the top where our hair is and just seeing how it is. Is it good? Is it bad? Is it neutral? Just checking in on it. We're not trying to solve anything in this area now. We're just trying to have a communication with our body and seeing how it's feeling. feeling. Now down into our forehead and seeing how it is. Like, good, is it bad? Maybe it's aching a bit. Maybe that's because you've been frowning too much today or you've been laughing a lot. There's, a, there's quite a lot of reasons and it's quite nice just to be mindful of how, it, how our acts and our emotions and our movements have an effect on our body. Moving down into our eyes, maybe if they're feeling good, you've been getting good night's sleep and you've been refreshed or maybe the opposite, or you've been looking at a screen too long and just being aware of that and knowing that there are things that we can do. But we don't have to fix that now. We're just being aware of it and being mindful of it. Let's move down to our cheeks and see how they are. Mine are always aching at the end of one of these sessions because I've been talking for nearly an hour. So it's always the way for me. But it might be for you that it might be something else. We don't know. We're all different. Moving down into our jaw and seeing how that is. Feel free to give any part of the body a wiggle when we're focused on it as well, if that helps. Good. Let's move around to the back of our head and the top of our neck. And we're just going to work down our spine bit by bit here, just focusing on each bit as we go down to where the neck meets our shoulders and the rest of our torso. Good. Then we're going to go out towards the edge, towards the deltoids seeing how they are so into the deltoids now we've got three muscles here one at the front one in the middle one at the back and just focus on there seeing how it feels and then we're moving on to our biceps so into the front of our arms the biceps here checking in on them seeing how they're doing you can always give them a little flex and just see how they're working into our elbow joint next is this feeling good is it feeling bad tight Maybe it's feeling good after the stretches that we've done today that affected those areas. Into our forearms now, seeing how they are. Into our wrists, our hands, knuckles, right the way down to the edge of our fingertips. And then we're gonna bring that focus back up our arms into the back of our arms now. So our triceps, so that's, the other, that's the rear part of our upper arm. And seeing how they are. Focusing on it, checking in, how's it doing? Good. Let's move around now into the front of our torso, so into our chest area, and just seeing how that is as well. Obviously, we've got our heart and our lungs. Hard to pay attention to this, but maybe just take a second to see how it is. Maybe you can even feel the heartbeat, putting your hand on the chest to feel that beat, see if it's beating regularly, checking on the chest to see if it's sore or if it's feeling okay. And lowering it down now into our tummy. Obviously, here we've got a lot of our digestive system. It's always rumbling and grumbling. Uh, is it hurting or is it bloated or anything like that? Is there anything that maybe we can do to our diet going forwards that could help that? Let's see how it is. Moving to the back again, we're going to go up to where our spine meets our shoulders again. But we're going to go down the spine this time instead of out towards the shoulders. So we're just checking in there in the shoulder blades in the spine, working it way down through the mid spine and then into our lower spine. Feel free to give it a wiggle side to side, back and forth. 
Is it feeling maybe loose because we've been doing some of the movements to help that? Maybe it's feeling a little bit fatigued from the movements we're doing. So just checking in on it, seeing how it's feeling. And going down into our hips. Now, obviously, this is an area that I can't feel. So it's a good demonstration to say, like, although even if you can't feel it, an area or you don't have that quite good connection, we're still checking on it to see how it's doing. It might be nothing, but it might be that we find something early, which is, I'll explain a little bit more at the end about that. So into the hips, maybe give yourselves a hip wiggle, and then into our upper legs. First of all, the front of our upper legs, the quads. Seeing how they are, you can give them a little flex, maybe. Yeah, and then into the rears, the hamstrings now. Seeing how they are. Down into our knee joints now. Seeing how that's happening there. Just checking in, putting your focus there, and then moving on to the next bit. So into our calves, just the back of our lower legs. Down into our Achilles, our heels, the middle of our foot, into our toes. Now keep that focus down there on the toes. What we're going to do, we're going to breathe in. But as we breathe in, I want you to imagine you're filling your whole body up with oxygen from your toes all the way up to your head. So breathing in, nice big breath in. Once you feel like right to the top of your head, breathing out. Nice expressive breathing here. And again. One more time. Good work. So I'm just going to explain just before we finish off here why that was really important. So quite a lot of our time, we can focus so much on different parts of our body, maybe there's a constant problem we have, or we're just, just going through the motions of our life, and we're not listening to our, how our body is trying to tell us stuff. And the idea of the body scan is to listen to it. You go, right, this is our time. You know, if I, it took six minutes there to do that. And it's just going through and just checking in and seeing what our body's telling us. You know, is there soreness? Is there aching? Is it feeling good? Is it feeling refreshed? And it's giving us these clues. And then we could, from there, once you do it more and more times, we can build up a bank of information within our head, or you can even write it down. And that gives us sort of a, a reference point to go from. So go like, actually, you know what, today, my wrist isn't feeling as good. Maybe I need to pay some attention to that. Maybe do some more stretching or have it, you know, maybe just give it some rest for a bit and then checking on it another time and go, actually, no, it's feeling better now. I've had that rest and that recovery. So it's just having that conversation with our body. And it means that we can sometimes pick up things before they become a problem as well. So I'll give the example of the wrist again. You know, I've had it in the past where the muscles here were quite tired and sore. Uh, and I was body scanning, I checked and I noticed it. And I was like, tried to do some self massage on it. Um, and I wasn't quite strong enough to do it on myself. So I went to somebody, they helped do it out. And then the pain went away and checking in on it. And the constant massaging actually really helped it in the long run. So just checking in on it and you don't, it doesn't mean you have to have like a medical diagnosis to fix it it could be just making adjustments in your life to help you in the long run anyway guys we've come up to the edge of the hour now so very good session today well done everybody i'm going to 